Hi friends. Well, it happened again. I read this morning that I am an idiot for moving to Mexico. And I'm going to keep saying this as long as I keep getting those kinds of comments. By the way, since I started saying what I'm going to say now, I've gotten a lot less of those comments and what I'm going to say now that I've said before. So I apologize for those of you who think I keep harping upon this. But hey, when you're a YouTube uh, creator, uh, you get these comments and it becomes part of your life. When you make a comment that says I'm an idiot for moving to Mexico, it says absolutely nothing about me. Nor does it say anything about Mexico. The only real information that it conveys is the mindset of the author. <laughs> so I'm going through my closet this morning after having answered that and said, saying something like, mm, oh, you know a lot about being an idiot, but not much about Mexico. I'm going through my closet looking for the shirt to wear today. Stand. And I'm thinking to myself, you know, basically I live here in Mexico on my social security. So here's my question for the guy that wrote the idiot comment today. Will you be able to live on your social security? If you're living on your social security, do you have a maid that irons your shirts? Lake Chapala. Is it dirty? Is it polluted? Is it killing us? Well, if I had known about the body of information that's available for me to study, I wouldn't have started making this video. It's a complicated subject. Please enjoy my stories or whatever else might be on my mind today. There's a lot of videos uh, on the internet and a lot of opinions expressed on the internet that Lake Chapala is very, very polluted. And I've studied the history of where that information comes from and I've studied the current um, quality of the water of Lake Chapala. It's not all good, but it's not all bad. Let's get to it. Speaking of comments, I got this one a couple of days ago after I said I was going to make this video about the pollution of Lake Chapala in Mexico. This is from Guillermo. Guillermo wrote, Yes, the lake is very contaminated. Even though I was born in Guadalajara and spent many summers in Chapala, in parentheses, I now live in Phoenix for the past 30 plus years. When I go to Chapala, I do not eat fish from the lake. Guillermo, I hope you're watching today because things have changed in the last 30 years. Lake Chapala is a big lake. It's 80 kilometers by 20 kilometers. That's 50 miles by 12 miles, over 600 square miles of surface area. Um, not counting the Great Lakes in the United States and maybe Salt Lake, the Great Salt Lake in Utah. It's the largest lake, not only in Mexico, but in North America, not counting those other lakes. It's an important lake in Mexico, 11 million people. Uh, depend upon its water for city water. It's a recreationally an important lake for five million people who live in Guadalajara and like to come down to the lake for the weekend. So there is a lot of concern about the quality of the water and as I found out in my research there are a lot of uh, tests that have been done to see what the water quality actually is. There are a couple of videos floating around on YouTube about how terrible the water is at Lake Chapala and I continually get questions about what's my opinion uh, of that uh, situation. One of those videos starts out with a horrible headline about the terrible pollution of a lake in Argentina and then proceeds to compare Lake Chapala to that lake in Argentina. There is a vested interest in those videos 
negative news sells newspapers and negative headlines get more YouTube views. I know this. That video, and the one that irks me the most, has had 6,700 views, and it's my goal here to get many, many, many more views of the other side of the story about the pollution of Lake Chapala. But this isn't my story. This isn't my opinion. I've been very diligent in researching what I'm going to say today in order that it's not just my opinion or a YouTube opinion or the musings of some easy chair experts who like to weigh in on local forums. I'm going to give you some real facts. I've found a lot of statistical information about water tests and water quality for Lake Chapala. And I've learned that there are two things that are used in judgment of the quality of water. One of them is for recreational use. And that's kind of divided into full submersion, like swimming under the water, and um, partial immersion, like wading or water skiing. And the second use that is judged is how good is it for delivery to a municipal water treatment plant for use in a city as the city water source. So those two things, recreational use and a source of city water. There are international standards for the judgment of these qualities. And those standards are based upon parts per million for things such as E. coli, fecal coliform, and heavy metals. And you, you can translate that as bacteria, uh, human and animal waste, <laughs> and um, arsenic and mercury in particular. Those are the things that people worry about when they're talking about the quality of water. There's another quality of water that people judge, and if you come to Lake Chapala and you walk down to the beach and you look in the water, it's going to look muddy. It's a shallow lake, its average depth is 23 feet, and there's a lot of wave action which stirs up the mud. And um, there's also a carp. Uh, I grew up in South Dakota, and any lake that had carp in it looked muddy all the time. If you went up to the Black Hills where uh, the, the, the main fish in the water were trout, the water was clear. Carp stir up the mud. Um, I am told that if you go a half a mile out into the lake that the water is clear, where it's not stirred up by wave action and uh, fish along the shore. So that's another way that people make a judgment, but we're not talking about the looks of the water, we're talking about the actual chemical quality of the water today. I'm going to give you the sources of my information. One of them is called the Global Nature Fund. The Global Nature Fund is a highly respected German company that monitors and lobbies for clean water in lakes, freshwater lakes, all over the world. Um, they did a study of Lake Chapala back in 2004 when the lake level was 15% of its capacity and found that the concentration of pollutants was very, very high. As a matter of fact, in 2004, the Global Nature Fund named Lake Chapala as the worst lake in the world. I was here in 2004. The lake edge, the beach, was it was way out there. A boat ride from the pier in Chapala. All of the boats that would, in years past, take people for a ride in the lake were on the back of flatbed trucks. So you would get off of the pier into the boat, which is on a really tall flatbed truck, and the truck would drive you out to the lake 
with people in the boats on the back of the truck and drive along the lake for miles. And that was a boat ride in Lake Chipop. Um, here's a picture of my Suzuki out in front of my house here in 2004. I'm about a half a mile out towards the water from my house. The level of the lake was 15%. And when water evaporates, it leaves behind the minerals and the pollutants. And there was very great and very legitimate concern about the 11 million people who use Lake Chapala as their source of city water. It was terrible. But it was in 2004. In 2006, we had a hurricane from the Pacific and a hurricane from the Atlantic. They kind of met here up in the uh, central plateau of Mexico and it filled up the lake. It got up to about 80% capacity from its year before 15% capacity. And what does that do? Well, of course, it uh, dilutes the terrible pollution. That's certainly not the whole story. Some more of the story is that the laws of the federal government for water usage and water allotment changed. For years, all of the farms two and three Mexican states away along the Lerma River used up the water and very little of it got to Lake Chapala. Um, there are some other uh, factors that have taken place both politically and geographically that I'll talk about a little bit more in a minute. Another source of my information, and um, there was a lot of it at this place, the National Sanitation Foundation. The National Sanitation Foundation was founded in 1944 at the University of Michigan School of Public Health. It is the organization uh, that sets the standards in the world for water quality. If you have a bottle of water next to you in the United States, look on it and see. It may very well have NSF on it, meaning that it meets the standards, worldwide standards, of the National Sanitation Foundation. NSF tested the water in Lake Chapala and rated it at 55, from zero being terrible to 100 being excellent. They classed it at 55 points out of 100 and uh, graded it at medium, medium quality water. That's the NSF. Well, having a water quality standard, whether it's from the Global Nature Fund or the National Sanitation Foundation, a standard is no good unless you have test results by which to compare them to. I found a guy named Dr. Todd Strong, who has a home here in Ahihik. I tracked him down at his other home in New Mexico. He has monitored the water quality of Lake Chapala for 16 years. He's been commissioned by uh, governments here locally. And let me stress again that the federal government, the state government, the local governments here in Mexico are not ignoring the water quality of Lake Chapala. It's the water for a lot of people, and they're paying attention to it. And they've done a lot of things to help clean it up. Anyway, I was so happy to uh, make contact with Dr. Stong, and uh, I called him and we spent an hour talking on the phone, and he uh, enlightened me. He also sent me a lot of uh, literature and studies that would have been much more difficult for me to find. So thank you, Dr. Stong. So let's talk about some specific concerns. One of my biggest concerns, because I too am subject to reading the local news, there was an article uh, not too long ago, a couple of years ago, about uh, children east of Chapala dying of kidney disease 
caused by mercury poisoning from eating fish out of Lake Chapala. I have worried about that. I asked Dr. Stong about that, and I'm going to read what I wrote as a summary of our conversation and also other stuff that I've read from him and from other sources. I'm going to read this because I want to make sure I say it accurately. Here's a headline. Mercury poisoning is causing kidney failure in children at Lake Chapala. It's true that there is a high incidence of kidney problems in, a, in small communities east of Chapala. In my hour-long conversation with Dr. Stong, he listed many medical and cultural reasons for those kidney problems, most of which were over my head in medical terms. But he was very clear in his assessment of the lack of potential for mercury poisoning from eating fish in Lake Chapala. Of the most commonly eaten fish in Lake Chapala, tilapia, catfish, and carp, carp had the highest incidence of mercury poisoning, 0.4%, 60% less than a can of tuna fish in the United States. Kidney problems in Mescala were not the result of mercury poisoning from eating fish. And even if it were, that doesn't translate to a concern for the general population which is not living on protein from the fish of Lake Chapala. Much of that myth of mercury poisoning comes from those old studies when the lake was at 15% of its capacity. 20 years ago, the Lerma River was highly polluted with industrial waste. And since then, there have been 200 sewage treatment plants built along 700 miles of the Lerma River between here and Mexico City. That's the river that feeds the lake. The water coming into the lake is cleaner than it was 20 years ago. Also, the Santiago River, which is highly polluted, and I've seen the Santiago River when it runs over a rock or something and makes, uh, you know, foam. It's ugly, yellow, horrible-looking, stinking foam. It's terrible. But it doesn't run into Lake Chapala anymore since the federal government raised the allotment to, in favor of the lake um, and less water usage by the farmers who irrigate up the Lerma River. They've legislated that the lake level has to stay at 60%. At 60%, the Santiago River doesn't run into Lake Chapala. Lake Chapala runs into the Santiago River, which then is diverted into another river system. So that source of pollution no longer exists. Kidney failure in children east of Chapala and other towns along the lake is not a problem to be diminished, and I don't mean to. It's bad. But it's not caused by mercury poisoning from eating fish in Lake Chapala. This one I ran into almost made me laugh. Almost. This is from TripAdvisor, a place where people who are going to travel check to see what other people think about it. TripAdvisor. There's no swimming in Ahihik, so here we are with a beautiful view of the large lake, which is polluted and no public swimming pools. It kind of highlights the situation in general here. Swimming pools and mansions for the wealthy, nothing much for the local people. And as I'm reading this, I'm looking out my window at people boating, fishing, Swimming. <laughs> Here's a picture of the Balneario. I go to this. It's uh, not too far from my house. It's a public swimming pool. There are other public swimming pools. Um, oh, let's not forget Tobolandia, a huge water park right here in Ahihik. Public. 
There are hotels that have public swimming pools. The guy just doesn't know what he's talking about. I relate this because it's typical of the misinformation that floats around on the internet about Lake Chapala. Swimming pools for the rich, nothing for the locals. Oh, this is the beach in Chapala. Oh, are all those people swimming at the beach in Chapala in danger of losing their life because of full body immersion in the pollution of Lake Chapala? The standard for fecal coliform parts per million in the United States for public swimming pools is 200 parts per million. In Mexico, it's a little higher. It's 240 parts per million. In a study of Lake Chapala's water, from 19 water samples all around the lake, the average parts per million was measured at 50 parts per million, four times better than the standard for public swimming pools in the United States of America. So how do we explain horrible, horrible reports of pollution in Lake Chapala and the coexistence of tests that show that's just not the case. Lake Chapala carries a lot of old baggage from 20 years ago when the lake was nearly dry. And it was a concern. But in the ensuing 20 years, 200 water treatment plants have been built to help clean up the Lorma River. The Santiago River no longer flows into it. Federal legislation has legislated more water into the lake to maintain its level. The lake is cleaner than it used to be. It's cleaner than a lot of swimming pools in the United States. Am I going to drink the water in Lake Chapala? No. <laughs> Fish pee in there. <laughs> Hey, if you like me, give me one of those thumbs up and please subscribe and hit that little bell so you know when I post next. Please share me with your friends on social media. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed what was on my mind today.